So, so this is this is your testimony of faith, just as a more of a ceremonial, because you already you already believe, right? Absolutely. You are you already have believed, and and to you, what is Islam? What is the beliefs of Islam? Like, what do you what do you believe? It, it's it's kind of hard to just pinpoint one thing. I think it's about living life right and and, and doing what's good and, and taking care of one another and. And just living your life right, right. Yeah. So much. And then, in terms of the beliefs, we have we believe in one God, and you accept that. Absolutely. You believe in Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the messenger of God, as being the messenger of God, the, the Rasul. Yes. Yes. You believe uh, in the in the books that God has sent, and uh, ending with the Quran, the Quran being the book yes. of God, and belief in the angels, and then belief in the last day. And you said this was something that you've been you you you, you embraced in between April and May. Yes. So for us, for me, looking at <clears throat> at the you know at your journey, your spiritual journey, you you embraced faith back in April or May when you finally said yes, this is what I believe. And so this shahada is your announcing that to the community. So I don't want you to feel that you became Muslim today. You know, you became Muslim that moment where. That faith entered your heart and you said, yes, this is what I believe. Because it's a relationship between you and God and you don't need it affirmed by any other human being. You don't need a special, um, 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 you know, your faith can't be given or taken away by somebody else. This was your relationship be between you and God. Uh, but the shahada, uh, the, the specific announcement, um, can be done by by anyone. And I'm actually going to ask Hans Sajad, a good friend of mine, uh, to, to, to walk you through the process. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, bro. Assalamu alaikum. Um, basically, it's just the declaration, two declarations. One declared that there is no God but Allah, and the second declaration there witness that Muhammad is the Son of God, is the messenger. So we say it in Arabic, and the first part is Ashhadu, and you can repeat after me. Okay. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. A bear witness, there is no God but Allah. A bear witness, there is uh, that Muhammad is the messenger. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. That's it. I would. Uh, I'm. I'm a hug him, even though I know it's COVID and everything. I'm a hug. <laughs> but I'm a hug. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't going to miss this for nothing, man. Yeah, I wasn't going to miss this for nothing. Man. Thank you. Uh, if anyone you understands the journey, I do. Anyone. Um, I know it's being recorded, but I have to give you, I have to give a reason for uh, the significance of this when it came to me. While I was in prison, right, it's after a few years of being in there, and I'm still running with the homies inside. I started going to Juma services in prison. The brothers invited me to come to Juma. And I had been doing that for a couple of months. Some of the homies didn't care about that. Some of them did. But there was one dude who did not like that. Because all the Muslims were black. And he felt like you shouldn't be over there. So they come and get me, and they're like, hey, uh, homie such and such wants to talk to you. Mm -hmm. That's the dude you don't want talking to you. When he summons you, it's like you're in trouble. Yeah. So I was like, man, this is not going to happen. And so we, we sit down on the yard. He wants to talk to me on the yard. So I guess he wants to check me in front of everybody. So I'm sitting there. He's got his little four soldiers standing around us. And he starts off by telling us this history of the gang and Mexican history and all this other stuff. And basically telling me why I can't go to Muslim services. Because they're all black. So I stop him and I'm like, well, you know I'm Mexican, right? What do you mean Mexican? <laughs> and at the time, I mean, you can imagine my hair was slicked back. I didn't have a beard. And they didn't know me as Sajah Shakur. They knew me by the other name. So, um, 
what you mean you ain't Mexican? I'm not Mexican. I'm uh, from Pakistan. And, you know, I'm a Muslim. So I'm going to Muslim services. And he's like, he wanted me to not go to Muslim services. Because everyone in there is black. So I made a conscious decision. Whatever happens today, whether they kill me or what, I'm going to stand on this right here. Whatever happens. And it was a very dangerous situation. You know what I'm talking about? That's a very dangerous very well. That's a very dangerous situation that you're putting yourself in that you make the wrong decision. Your life is over. That's the way they play the game. Very hostile, by the way. Yeah. And and they don't give you option A, B, or C. It's like you you do this or you die. Very simple. Um I was like, man, this, I, I can't, I can't turn back on this, you know? So I'm like, brother, look, these guys are Muslims, right? You're my homeboy. Those guys are my brothers. You're asking me to make this choice. And I'm not making that choice, man. I'm going to go to services. And I felt like, and I told him, I said, you know, you're not making that same uh, decision for people that go to Christian services. There's blacks in there. Right? And you're not telling none of the homies not to go to Christian services, so why are you doing that with us? So anyway, he's like, we're going to discuss this later. The fact that I wasn't Mexican kind of threw him for a loop, and he went and we had to figure out, how am I going to address this guy? You know, because that's his religion, that's his race, right? And uh, anyway, I left, and I'm like, I'm, I'm in limbo. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if they're still going to kill me or not. But I'm like, I'm not going. I'm, I'm going to stay here. I'm not going to go to protective custody or nothing. I'm staying here. Well, the Muslims saw him checking me, and they approached. They don't play, by the way. Yeah. They don't play either. The Muslims ain't playing either. Mm -hmm. So the girls, the number they do not care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they saw him checking me, right? And they uh, came to me and they're like, what was that about? And I'm like, look, I, it's none of your business. I don't want to get you guys wrapped up in, you know, in this stuff because it'll cause a lot of problems. So no, it's, I got this, but don't worry about it. Don't get involved in this. I'm a youngster, right? And th these guys have been down for years. So they're like, we got this, man, don't worry. They went to him, and they basically told him, look, if anything happens to that youngster, it's on between us. There weren't a lot of Muslims on the yard. A lot of homies on the yard, but not a lot of Muslims on the yard. But the way the Muslims went and approached him, it's like if anything happens to this brother, because he's choosing to be Muslim, if anything happens to him, it's war. And you don't want to go to war with us, man. And you know what? After that, they left me alone. Bro. They left me alone. I stayed on the yard for the next 15 something years. Wow. And they were like, they weren't happy. They weren't happy at all. But it's like, this is his religion. You have I mean, to stand what you believe in. Yeah, you have to stand mm -hmm. what you. And, and they appreciated the fact that, you know, um, I didn't run, I stayed there. And and, 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 and and I wasn't playing with it. That was the other thing. I trusted a lot, 100%. I'm like, look, I'm making my, my I'm turning my life over to you, but ain't no half step in this. I'm doing this 100%. And man, I'll be honest with you, every decision I made every, after that, Allah guided me all the way. Even removing the life sentence. Is that a life sentence? That life sentence came off as a result of the decision to do the right thing. And yeah. you said, Javier, there was a point where you where you consciously made that decision too, right? Like you had a conversation with God and you I said, did. Get me out of this and I will do I will right do thing. the right thing. I did it when I, before I was in the sentence when they were still wanting to give me attempted murder. I mean everybody knows what comes with attempted but it's a life sentence. And I I, I was scared. I was twenty two years old. And I said, my life can't be over already. And um, I, I said, you know, if you get me out of this, I swear I'll change. Whether, you, if, 
I make it out of this or not, if I still get the license, I saw, I'll still dedicate my, you know, my life to God. And it went away two weeks later. Mm -hmm. They dropped it. And then, of course, I had to fight it. And then eventually it was a very uh, minimal sentence. Mm -hmm. But what did that do for, like, you when you have, after you had that conversation? And, like, what was your feeling? So, at, at the time, because I was still young and I was a product of my environment, it, it wasn't a, a fast transition. I did change. I, um, I, I, I was had more control of it, so I was able to, to just kind of almost like check myself before I, I did something, which I never mm -hmm. did before. Before I was just very spontaneous, very just do it, whatever. Yeah. Don't even just think, just do it, because that's how I was. That's how I grew up. That's how how it was when we grew up. And uh, it wasn't until oh god, like. A year and a half later, to where it finally just just clicked. I mean, I was always positive and I was always good. I was always uplifting and, and wanting to help people because that's who I am. And I just seen the change. It was about a year, year and a half to where I seen the change, and I was all in. And then from there, I just I flew forward and I didn't get myself involved. But because of of where you're at, you have to be involved right. to a certain extent. And because of what I did and, and the jobs that I had in there, I. I had to conduct myself at a higher standard. So, not only did I do that for myself, but because of who I was there, I, I changed. I, I did the same thing. I, uh, I very focused. You know, I feel like I'm on a schedule to run once You got to catch up. Yes, because before I was, I was very successful. I, I was very young in my twenties, making a lot of legit money. I was doing very well with the business I did, and, and I lost it all. And, and I figured. I was two years behind and thousands of dollars behind. So then I, I just stayed focused like I've always been. And, and because of God, I've been able to, to have what I have and, and do what I do. So you made, the, you made the change, but it was gradual. It was. It, it but took focus. You still you maintained the focus, but the gra it was a gradual shift. It wasn't like this. You know, no, 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 it wasn't overnight. No, 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 yeah. not at all. Yeah. It took at least, at least a year. Yeah. And, and what I would say about that is that, <clears throat> excuse me, is that, Coming over here, I was thinking, you know, what advice would I give to a new Muslim? And it's, it's, it's a hadith, a saying of the Prophet that I mention a lot when somebody first becomes Muslim, which is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, peace be upon him, that this deen, this religion of Islam is is strong, is mateen. Like, it's 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 heavy. It's not a, it's not a light thing. It's not a light uh, commitment. Yourself, you can you can drive yourself. Like, you could have made that change when you, when you said, God, I'm going to change my life. You could have driven yourself and made those changes like in a week or two. But you knew yourself. You said, I'm going to stay focused. And I'm going to do this over a period of time. And it, and it took about a year, right? So the Prophet Muhammad was telling us, you know, take your time with this religion. Don't pile everything um, uh, on yourself at once. Uh, stick to the bare, the, the, the basics, you know, the, the, the basic practice. Uh, the basic interaction rules that we uh, that, that, that a Muslim should should conduct him or herself with, uh, and then little by little, you know, make that gradual change. So if you ever feel like, oh, this is getting too much, just remember, you know, take it take it easy. Take it. It's, a, it's a marathon and it's not a sprint. There's one so, thing I would like to share with you. Though. Yes. So I'm not an emotional person. Uh, I was raised not to be emotional, and because of, of how I, I grew up, I had no room for emotions. And, uh, and I was talking to her, uh, like, uh, and, and halfway through our conversation, I felt emotional for some reason. And I'm not, I'm not an emotional person. And uh, I spoke with my friend about this. And uh, you know, what I said was that I guess that's a lot of knowing that I, I want to, or, or I want to be part of uh, Islam, or, or I'm not sure mm. how it's it yeah, it's a sign. That's what yeah, it was yeah. a sign. Because it wasn't normal for you. No. Yeah. Because it was very different. And, and I, and I, I mean, you can't think how you feel. Yeah. That, that's just how I felt. And I thought, wow, maybe it is a sign. Right. And so th that's when you started reaching out to the mosques and the masajid to try to find a place? No, no. Actually, this this happened right as, as I was speaking with him. Oh, okay. This happened two days ago. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, this happened two days ago. I, I've been reaching out for, yeah, so, well, actually... Right, right after COVID started. Oh, so it's been months as you were reaching out to mosques. Yeah, I was trying. I was trying to maybe get something or kind of information before you know 
goes, you know, even worse, you know what I mean? So how many mosques did you end up contacting before MCC? Maybe a dozen. Maybe a little bit more. It doesn't go well for Sacramento. <laughs> I mean, Sacramento, uh, Santa Clara, San Jose. I think there was one in Sunnyvale. And um, you were just asking them, like, I just want to take my Shahada. I, I was talking, I just wanted to talk to anybody to get any kind of information. Because, I mean, there's only so far you can go on. And, 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 and any responses from those dozen messages? No. Some of them, they, the, you go to leave a message and it just, the phone just hangs up. But but that didn't that didn't uh, uh, deter me. Deter you? No, I'm very focused on what I want and what I want to do, and then, especially if it's a change, a good change yeah. in life. Um, there's nothing that can stop me. Right? Because you're not doing this for other people. You're no. not doing it for you're doing it for yourself, and Absolutely. so you kept at it. Absolutely. It's yeah. Something I want. Something I truly want. Yeah. Not, not no. for anyone else. Yeah. This is for me. Yeah. Well, and and what you, the 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 person that mentioned that you know maybe that sign of emotion that you had was a sign of uh, sometimes we say tofiq. You know, success, divine success. Mm -hmm. Like um, when God gives you success to feel, everything lines up. Like I didn't know Had Sajad was going to be here, right? You didn't know you were going to be here. No, he called you me yesterday. You weren't planning to be here or yesterday or day. I, I didn't know he was going to be here. Yeah, no, he called me. Was it day? Uh, yesterday or day before? Yes. I'm actually on my way. Um, but this is crazy how everything happened. I. You know, when I, when I leave the restaurant, right, I have to coordinate all kinds of stuff to make sure somebody's going to be there. Because I got a bunch of kids. They'll burn the place down. <laughs> and um, so anyway, it takes a lot of coordination. So today, I was on my way to Union City because my ex, Sally, just got found suitable. After 25 years. After 25 years, right? And he got found suitable. So I'm looking for a restaurant out there to purchase for him so he can come out and have his own place. And um, so I was on my way over there. He calls me and he's like, oh, it's going to be, uh, he told me about you. And he's like, it's going to be at like 11 something. I'm like, I'm going to, I was on my way over there to the Bay anyway. I'm going to rearrange all of that so I can come here. But it's just weird how things lined up because it, it would have taken me weeks to get. Same way. Yeah, it would have taken me weeks to get somebody, all the people to take care of the restaurant when I'm not there, you know, and. So when, uh, today, it, it, yeah. So anyway, I wasn't gonna miss this when he when he told me. I'm like, oh yeah, that I can delay, but I'm, I'm coming here. Yeah, for sure. So well, it you're... took all kinds of just to back. Uh, yeah. you know, it's crazy because all the things lined up in 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 ways you can't even imagine, man. My my experience in prison was the same way in the sense that when you make the commitment. That you're gonna trust a lot to handle your affairs, right? And you do the right thing now. Once you trust in the law to handle your affairs, and then you reinforce that by doing the right thing yourself. After that, don't even worry about it. That's exactly what I did. Yeah, yeah don't exactly worry. Let Allah handle it. That was the secret. The secret exactly. to success. Just those two things. Yeah. Those yeah. Depend on simple? God. Depend on Allah, and do the and right do the thing. thing. Oh, that's Is that simple? Yeah, yeah, very simple? Is that simple? Very simple and for us. And my life hasn't been better. And both you and Javier and Hatch the Jad, you've never met before this day, but no, you've come no. to the same reali realization that that's all you need to do for success. Two simple things, man. Absolutely. You've got to trust them. Ain't no half step. No, you have to be all in. Ain't no half yeah. step. You've got to trust. you got to trust in the law and just reinforce that with doing the right. The minute that you put a little bit of slick in the game, that's when things go bad. Because that means you're no longer trusting the law. You're trusting your own smarts. Mm. You gotta trust the law and do the right thing and believe that it's gonna come out right. You it's just when I started from off the corner, it was with that simple strategy. That simple strategy. I trusted the law that this was I was doing it as a service, that it was gonna be successful. And I know I was gonna end up as many stores as I do now. No, yeah. I didn't think so. But um, as long as I stayed true to those two things, Alhamdulillah, Allah kept blessing me, man. That's you know, when my homeboys and stuff come, come through, man, I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, you mentioned something earlier um, that, that, that sometimes people from your past, you know, they might see you 10, 15, 20 years later, and they haven't seen all of this, these changes and the transitions, you know, that, that, that you've made. Um, and that maybe even the people that are really close to you, maybe they get an understanding of it, but somebody who's not close to you is not going to understand it at all. 
but they're still operating with you the way you were. That's um, the point and, of reference. Right. And the it made me think of, you know, the, even the process of, of when a person becomes Muslim and, and starts developing their Islam, whether they were born Muslim and start developing their Islam, because uh, I have that, that uh, uh, experience as well. I was born Muslim, but I didn't always practice. Right. You know, and so you have to, you know, you start on the path, or you weren't born Muslim, but then you, you chose Islam, like you did, Javier. Um, and <clears throat> there's going to be other people in your life that they don't see your journey. Right, it might be family, it might be friends, and so you all, you have to have like mercy and compassion with them, uh, yeah. but steadfast on your path. Like this is who I am, but I'm also you know I'm 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 I'm, I'm recognizing where you are, and and there's some things that you might not accept about me, but even in the process of you not accepting, I'm going to be mercy merciful and compassionate. I agree. Yeah, I agree. That's that's the point. Be comfortable with who you are and, and what you want to do, and especially when it comes to Allah, I think it's it's important to. Just stay true to yourself and then do what you want, regardless of, of anyone else's opinion or, or or someone might treat you different because of it. Yeah. So you just, you said be comfortable with who you are. So how do you deal with when somebody when some when somebody else is not comfortable with who you are, but you're comfortable with who you are, or one element of who you are? How do you deal with that? You know what? I, I'm I, I've been blessed by the ability to to communicate. With I, that's one of my strong points. If someone has an issue, like, you know, why, why, why do you have an issue? You know, what do you think? You know, I mean, you can't believe what you see on TV. Or ask me, ask me any question you like, and come with them with love instead of, of anger or you know, just, just. If you're positive, I, I've been known to, to be put with the worst people, and by God, I've been able to change them. Wow. Not because I wanted to, but because they changed themselves. Mm. Well, because sometimes you just had a conversation with them. Sometimes you just gotta love people, and, and I've also had conversations with people that came up to me and apologized. Really? So I'm, I'm not sure why you're apologizing mm -hmm. because I the things I said about you and how I thought about you. I said it's fine, it's, it's okay. I hear it all the time, and they're like, "Well, no, no, I, I want to apologize. I feel bad. I said it's okay, it's fine. It's like, don't worry about it. It's me. It's all right. It's really no big deal. It's mm -hmm. okay. Good day. Yeah. And, and they change. You know, there's that old expression, you don't recognize the name. Absolutely. If, you, if you're serious, people recognize that. And they may, you know, come pick at you and test if you're going to buckle or not. But if you stay firm on your principles and you stay serious, people have nothing but respect for that. Even when they disagree Very with true. you. Very they true. may disagree yeah. with you. Very true. But they will respect you as a result that, you know, yeah. He's, he's serious. He's the same person every time. He doesn't get involved in stuff. And that goes back to number two. Believe in Allah and do the right thing. Yeah. That's all you need. I'm telling you, Islam is not complicated, man. For me, Islam is very simple. I don't have to uh, dress a certain way or look a certain way. Um, all I need to do is just believe in Allah and just be a good human being. Man. That's it. Islam is that simple. No, no. Well, and don't let no one tell you. Some, sometimes you go to a masjid, man, and they'll be like, "Brother, you need to do this." It's like, but I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah, gotta get you some got, of that. You got connections, you know. You got Munir's connect, you know. I'm uh, give you mine. Uh, I said that myself. So, because yeah, what he said is, is true. There's a lot of people that you might go to a mosque or to a community and you know, meet a Muslim, and they're like, "Oh, well, let me tell you about Islam." But you've already studied a lot. You have the tools to be able to figure out things you got here on your own, right? None of us, none of those dozen messages got you here. You got here, you got here by yourself with the, with the success from God. You know, he got you here. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but you know, if anything ever comes up, just reach out to us. If, oh, I heard somebody told me I have to do this or somebody told me Islam is this and just say, you know, I have some trusted sources. Just going to double check, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and not be, Sway, but but you don't look like the person that's no. going to be easily swayed. You, I'm you very know. stubborn. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I can't. I can't be swayed. I was a little different. Yeah, I mean it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. he's only telling you that because man, a lot of places you go, like you go to the masjid, and people, brother, you need to do this, you need to do that, you know, and and sometimes and they they may mean well. They're coming from a good spark uh, in their heart. That's their interpretation that a person has to look a certain way or act a certain way to be a model Muslim, right? But what they forget is that we're on different levels of evolution in our uh, faith. Some people are up here, some people are down here, you know? And you can't always meet people where 
you want them to be. You have to meet them where they are. And I think that's the most important thing. Like, I get that too. I go to a muscle sometimes. They want me to, brother, you need to do this and that. Like, okay. Yeah, you just say like, thank you and that's it. You can't tell me. No, that's yeah, what I'm doing. Keep it moving. I'll do that right now. Okay. I'm going to put it up. Good. I'm going to do that. All right, well, well, I think we got a. Uh, Nir's got some more. He's got some uh, a gift for you, and he oh, got a meal. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much.